Uh, hello everybody, I am about to go in and get a haircut, so this shaggy top and this beard is gonna get trimmed. Uh, I'm talking to my phone and there's a guy right over there, that's, that's fun. Uh, yeah, let's go get a haircut. <laughs> Hey, and we're back. All right, doing a, a Vsauce intro. Um, I got the haircut. I like it. It's nice. Uh, because of the virus, I haven't been getting a lot of haircuts. And uh, here, I'll, well, let's do a let's do a side by side of of like Jordan the before and after. Um, it's it's an improvement. Uh, welcome. This is my 30 days of world building challenge. Uh, we're going to, this is day four. Um, there's probably a link in the, the corner there if you guys want to watch from the beginning. It'll take you to a playlist, but we're going to hop over to my desktop and go open Notion, which is the software that I use to organize my campaign notes. And we're going to do today's challenge uh, in defining my homebrew campaign setting for various fantasy RPGs entitled Endegar. So let's go. And here we are in Notion. Now, uh, Notion's kind of been going through the world again. Sly Flourish, who originally introduced me to Notion, uh, made a YouTube video on Notion, um, and that's cool. So he was uh, talking about that, how he uses it. Um, it really is a fun tool. So this is my Endegar uh, Notion page, front end, whatever, uh, homepage. And uh, if you guys are interested in this, I did share this with my patrons. So you can go to patreon.com slash Jordan with PH in the middle. And uh, for as low as a dollar, you can become a patron, get access to this. Um, and we created a new chat in the Discord called Endegar where we can ask questions and kind of talk about world building and things like that. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, you check that out. Um, we're going to do our 30 days of world building. Uh, if you're new here, we're we're building a campaign world utilizing a uh, web writer, which is a Creative Commons writing course kind of designed for fantasy novels, but we're adapting it. And also an absolute tabletop 30 day world challenge that they introduced back in 2018. Um, and I'm kind of just I, I don't want to say I'm combining the two, but I'm doing both of them at once uh, to just have it be interesting. So uh, our, our web writer is on Cataclysms today. Um, and I'll click this really quick and we'll go to Cataclysms, which is day four. So you have your mood. You have generally a climate you want. If you read the linked site, blah, blah, blah. Now let's get to history. No dates and names, that's too recent. We're talking planetary history. How long has your world been around? Uh, start thinking now about what kinds of scars your planet might have from a major cataclysmic event. What major mountain ranges do you want or need to put in your story? What deep canyons, what craters marked plains are uh, your scars natural or are they man-made? These are all great questions. Uh, so our exercise today is for 15 minutes, which you can't see because my face is just always in the way. Oh, why does he do it? Uh, for 15 minutes, jot down some of the really big land features you want in your story and just think, what if they were made by blank? Write down a couple of causes for those features and scars and stick it all in your notebook. Which scars are slow force scars like plate tectonics and which are fast ones? Um, anything that takes less than 10,000 years. Endegar, uh, we're gonna go to locations and I built a world map right here. So this is uh, Endegar, and I think um, this is not permanent, so don't, you know, we can, we can change stuff up as we need. But uh, down here, I wonder if I can, can I go original? There we go. So down here, we have um, an island, and I just wanted a big volcano, so I put a volcano there. Um, I like the mountains here. I was following Nate on WSD20, and he has a lot of great map making tutorials and like the placement of things, which I thought was interesting. Um, this is kind of the big settlement that I wanted to work on at some point to flesh out a little bit more. Uh, this is the flying fortress that we've been talking about. Um, I got some settlements here. I think this might be a dwarven settlement. And then up here, some, some kind of clans. This is like the far north. It's really cold. Um, not a lot of people hanging out here. And these mountains are actually a barrier preventing people from kind of going farther north. And, and I think the sea is gonna be quite cold as well. But the interesting thing is this inner sea that's connected to the ocean down here. And I want this to be the cataclysmic event. 
something happened that destroyed this area or, or sunk, created it, or it allowed it to sink down. Um, and I think there's gonna be like uh, a, a kraken or some weird sea creatures or something in here. And then this island in the middle is a mystery. And nobody visits this island, it's gonna have something ab about it. And I don't, I don't entirely know what that is yet, um, but we're figuring it out. For those of you interested, I made this in Incarnate. Two hours later. What, his clothes changed, that's weird. I took a break and had dinner. Uh, so we're back. Uh, one of the programs I use is Wonderdraft. That is what I use to create the initial uh, continent. But then I found out that I really liked Incarnate and I went to that website that's through a web browser and I was able to, uh, I kind of had to jimmy rig it, but I was able to figure out a way of importing the existing map that I had so I could trace it and repaint it in Incarnate. And that's what this is here. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of fun. It turns out I like I like this so far. If we go back to, uh, well, what, 30 days of world building. Um, we're gonna consider earthquakes, volcanoes, things like that. So we wanna have um, a event that was because of um, an ancient race that lived on Endegar. And I don't know, I guess that's something I need to think about. Maybe I'll have uh, answers for you tomorrow is like how, how old is my planet? When did uh, the ancient race of people live? What did they leave behind? And are there dinosaurs on the moon? These are all questions that we have to answer. So in Endegar, there is a race that is not a playable race, but it might be under playable races. No, it's not. Um, it is under lore and history. So we have the uh, Verthandi. So the Verthandi are ancient goblins. Um, and I like the idea of uh, like Gith, I don't know, I put Gith here because I like the idea that these Gith are weird ancient humans or humans that like evolved differently or something. So this was based off of the Norse word uh, Verthandi. So I think I'm pronouncing correctly, but if not, I'm gonna use Verthandi. Um, and Verthandi was one of the fates and the fates is uh, a, a Greek or a Norse idea that I really liked where you kind of have like past, present and future. Um, and I think they, they spin um, the, yeah, they spin the, the stories and your, your fate for you basically. And they've got some magical items. I, I kind of wanted to have them be a greater power, which is why they're here. Um, I really like mythology, can you tell? So we're going through and I like that I wanted to do something with goblins. So the present day goblins were once a race of beautiful humanoid creatures called the Verthandi. And I took some Magic the Gathering art down here because I just liked this idea of them. Um, my mouse scrolling is not working. Uh, so the Verthandi were very sophisticated and saw their art, cities, religion, and achievements as the height of culture. They stepped out of their fate and tried to take over Endegar and other planes of existence, maybe other planets if I go that route. Um, but the fates themselves intervened um, and they cursed the Verthandi, not allowing them to fulfill their not destiny basically. Um, their bodies and minds were changed and they became an, uh, they became a, oh, I have this, uh, we'll say an outward reflection of the greed and corruption in their hearts. Um, in this new form, the Verthandi scattered and their cities fell into ruin and were destroyed by time. So th this is something like, is it true? I'm not really sure. But I like the idea that they, the goblins might believe this, uh, present day goblins in Endegar. Um, or other people might be like, well, no, yeah, there's some hint to that or something, but there's not like an old Verthandi city that we found. Uh, so that cataclysmic event could be uh, the Verthandi um, collapsing into the ocean for whatever reason. And maybe there's something underneath there and that could be a whole campaign. So I like that. I think I touched on cataclysms enough. We have our one and I'll work on the rest of them and I'll give you a report tomorrow on that. Uh, going over here, who is the most renowned hero in your world? Um, I don't know. So this is interesting because this is on the absolute tabletop 30 day world challenge. And I didn't really think about this, but like, I guess I thought my players would be the renowned hero. Uh, not necessarily, 
necessarily though. So we're gonna we're gonna make a renowned hero. I'm gonna go to NPCs, and I was thinking about this earlier today. And from our NPCs here, let's create a new one. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the treasury of archaic names. Uh, this is a kind of a so there's a book called The Treasury of Archaic Names, and I liked it so much, and I wanted to have it on the fly that I went through and I and I entered every every name into a Google Sheet, um, and I created this calculation thing so that I can go here and if I change anything on here, it'll reload all of these. Now these aren't um, specifically, and I can zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. These aren't specifically um, dwarf names, but I like the old fantasy feel of some of them. Um, and then I have uh, these, these names here and we have some tavern names that we can kind of pick from. Uh, but I don't really need any of those. We want to go, we want to do the master sheet, I believe. And so from here, we have titles. So I think my dwarf, we're going to say he is a siege breaker. Um, and like, he could be a warrior, or do you think he's a noble? Maybe we'll do noble. So uh, we go, we got first names, we've got uh, last names, and we have nicknames. And so he's going to be a very brave, um, very brave uh, siege breaker noble. And so my idea with this dwarf is that uh, the hubris of the humans tried to overtake the dwarven cities, but the dwarves were so entrenched in the underground and things like that, that it was like maybe years of fighting and the dwarves just uh, there for the long run. And they succeeded because they just are so stubborn that they wouldn't leave and they were not scared of these warlock humans. And I, I like that. So uh, we wanna create the biggest hero of Endegar is gonna be this dwarf that stood up to uh, the tyrannical warlocks and he rallied the other dwarves and they had, uh, I don't know, like a battle that lasted a year maybe. And it was just like, we'll win. Like we've got the powers, but like they underestimated um, how stubborn, how strong, and how committed uh, and entrenched the, drawer, the dwarves were. I kind of go through here and I look at some of these. I like Courageous. I like, I don't like Town Smiter. Castle Cracker I kind of like. And I don't like Sultan. So what I usually do, if I change anything on this screen, it's going to reload everything. And that's just kind of the way I accidentally put it together. So I create a little notepad and I write down the ones I like. So I like Bowler and I like Courageous, um, Castle Cracker. And then let's just reload this a couple more times. So we'll say King Bowler of, well, we need a last name. King Bowler Arsmith of the Dauntless. And then we'll give him a title like Castle Crasher, Cracker. Castle Cracker and Siege Breaker. All right, so here's our Here's our name. And I would love uh, to share this with you. It's a Google Doc, but unfortunately, uh, the PDF, they're not my names to give out. So um, I, I, I'm sorry. And so it, this NPC is King Bowler Arsmith. King Bowler Arsmith. And so he is King Bowler Arsmith of the Dauntless. And we have to decide what is the Dauntless. A year long battle the Pact Keepers, hoping to uh, wait out the dwarfs, but underestimated their resilience. So they're no longer at war necessarily, but they're not really friends. And maybe this happened like a long time ago and it's been, I don't know, a hundred years, but like to a dwarf, they're still just kind of angry and uh, dwarfish about it. Uh, I like that. 
Um, and I'll I'll find some art and stuff later, but this this could be this could be really good. So we're gonna so that's our that's our hero, and he is a hero not only to the dwarves, but to anyone that wants to stand up to the Pact Keepers. Because this was the guy who stood in front of them in the front line and said, no, like, we're not gonna leave, you're not getting our resources, we're not gonna work for you. And uh, that's cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is our show today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, again, really excited to have you guys on this uh, project. And so more and more people are doing that. If you are, use the hashtag my30dayworld. And uh, if I see it on there, I'll try to retweet it and things like that, because I think it's really cool. Uh, like Stephen Partridge, he's doing this as well. And he's got some excellent videos about uh, expanding on the world that he wrote for a novel and turning it into a tabletop RPG uh, campaign setting. So you should go check out his channel. I'll link it down below. Um, as, for, as for the rest of you, uh, keep being amazing, awesome people. And I will see you tomorrow with yet another video. Take care, everybody.